So now that you are familiar with the Gibbs free energy change and how it helps us determine if a reaction is spontaneous or not, let us solve this question to see if you have really understood this concept. You see, as simple as this concept is, there are times when students do get confused with the signs of the various thermodynamic functions that are involved here, like delta H0 or delta S0. And if you do get confused at these signs, then solving this question might just help you with the same. Okay? So let us look at the question. It says, which of the following reactions is spontaneous at all temperatures? So the reactions are given to us and we also have information on the delta H0 values which is the standard enthalpy changes for these reactions. Now we can figure out if these reactions are spontaneous or not using the Gibbs equation which is delta G0 R is equal to delta H0 R minus T delta S0 R which is the standard Gibbs free energy change is equal to the standard enthalpy change of the reaction minus temperature here T is for temperature multiplied by delta S naught R which is the standard entropy change for the reaction. Now a reaction is spontaneous if delta G naught is negative. And from the signs of delta H naught and delta S naught values we can predict if the delta G naught for these reactions would be negative and whether they would be spontaneous or not. Okay? So the first reaction here is a dissolution reaction where HCl gas is getting dissolved in water to form aqueous HCl. Now this reaction is exothermic and releases a lot of heat as you can see from the delta H0 value it is negative here. So we now need to look at the entropy factor. By looking at this equation we can see that we have more number of gaseous particles in the reactant side as compared to the product side. Correct? We have a gaseous reactant and an aqueous product. So that means in this case the entropy is decreasing. And because the system changes from a more chaotic and freer gaseous state to a more ordered aqueous state, there is a net decrease in entropy. The entropy change in this reaction would be negative. So for this reaction, both delta H0 and delta S0 are negative. So clearly you can see that this reaction will not be spontaneous at all temperatures. In fact, to make this reaction spontaneous, we have to keep a very low temperature so that the contribution from the T delta S can be minimized. Because what happens when we have higher temperature? T delta S naught would become much larger and as a result, it can significantly overcome or overcompensate the negative enthalpy change resulting in a positive delta G naught value. Or in other words, at higher temperature, the reaction would become non-spontaneous. Therefore, by keeping a low temperature, we ensure that the enthalpy factor becomes more dominant and helps make the delta G naught negative and the reaction spontaneous. Alright, so let's look at the second reaction which is the decomposition of ammonia. Now in this case, the delta H naught value is positive. That is, the reaction is endothermic. So delta H naught here is positive. And what can you predict about the delta H naught value? For that, let's look at the reaction equation. Okay? Here you can see that there are fewer number of moles of gaseous reactants as compared to the number of moles of gaseous products. That means, in this reaction, the entropy increases. And as a result, the delta S0 value would be positive. Now, a positive entropy change is definitely preferable because that would ensure that this entire term would become more negative and might help contribute to a negative delta G0. But basically, needless to say that this reaction is again not spontaneous at all temperatures. And to make this reaction spontaneous, we need a very high temperature. By increasing the temperature, this entire term of minus T delta S0 becomes sufficiently negative and can outweigh the positive enthalpy contribution and help make the delta G0 for this reaction negative. So in the decomposition of ammonia, the reaction becomes spontaneous or delta G0 becomes negative only at high temperature. Alright, let's look at the last reaction. So here again we have a negative delta H0 value. And what about the delta S0 value? To determine the sign of delta S0, we again simply need to look at the number of moles of gaseous products versus the number of moles of gaseous reactants. As you can see, in the reactant side, we do not have any gaseous component, whereas the product side has 4 moles of gaseous HCl. As we know, gases have much more positive entropy as compared to liquids and solids and that means the delta S0 value or the change in entropy for this reaction is also positive. 
Now this is exceedingly comfortable because in this case the delta G naught value will be negative at all temperatures. The delta H naught is negative and a positive delta S naught ensures that this term is also negative and that contributes to a negative delta G naught making this reaction spontaneous at all temperatures.